Welcome to the Skiff Build Series. And if you haven't been following along, haven't been keeping up, this is like part 18, I believe. And we're finally getting somewhere. And it's just, it's been a ton of work to get to this point, but we're finally getting somewhere. And I think there's some light there at the end of the tunnel. And I just am glad to finally see things coming together and it's starting to look more like a boat as much of a project. You know, we don't have long till we gotta get to the beach with this thing. And I'm just going through trying to get all the wiring done. I'm trying to, I'm kind of jumping back and forth a little bit from rigging to wiring and just trying to get it all pieced together. So I hope you liked the video series. Hope you're subscribed and appreciate everybody watching. And let's go ahead and get started. All right, well, we're gonna go ahead and start the wiring. I've already done a little bit and it's a mess right now. I'm just laying everything out, trying to remember everything that I need and just stretching out a little extra. I've got everything labeled just so when I get up in the console, it'll be a lot easier. And if you've never seen a little bitty $150 spool of wire, there it is. And this is marine grade, I think it's number one. And I ordered this, I looked everywhere trying to find it. And to find, I measured the length, I estimated the amps for the motor. And that was the hardest thing in the world, was trying to figure out the amp pull for a starter on a 60 horsepower 1996 Johnson. And I've looked and scoured the internet, looked on the starter, tried to read and find everything. But from everything I've read, 150 amps. So for 150 amps for the footage, it's only like, I think 12 feet. And that's, that's what it came out to was the number two was the minimum. But I went up one size from the minimum so just in case, give myself a little leeway. And I got a 50 foot spool from iBoat, I think it was. If it's not, I'll put it in the description. If it's not, I can't remember. I think I ordered it off iBoat. I think that was the cheapest with shipping, even off Amazon, eBay, everywhere. That was the cheapest. And surprisingly enough, black is cheaper than red. Explain that to me, I don't know. So I've got all black. So that's pretty simple to remedy. And it would kind of look bad since I'm running everything exposed for now. I'll probably cover it later. I'm gonna make some covers, but so it'll look a little better one. And two, it's a little piece of red tape, saves you $30. So, hey. All right, so I've got everything kind of stretched out and cut and labeled. And now I'm just kind of going through temporarily with some zip ties to just kind of neaten everything up. That way I can go ahead, get everything kind of, good for big old moth, but getting everything kind of the length, and that way once I get everything tied together to length, I can go ahead and start working inside a console. Well, I think we're getting somewhere. Got everything stretched out, kind of neatened up, just kind of temporarily. I'm still debating on how I would like to you know, strap this up permanently and make it look a little bit better. I had plans on molding some covers to go over it just from like here to here, just kind of like almost like wire mold, but out of fiberglass and gel coated kind of to match and look nice. I ain't got time. So I'm gonna just do some form of pretty much strapping this up exposed at the moment. And then later down the road when I've got a little more time and I'll probably mold out. Just take maybe two, a two by four and a sheet of plywood, screw them together, cover them with plastic, and that will probably be enough area to cover it and it'll be something simple and easy to do. And I'm having to cheat a little bit. I wanted to bring it in and name it, but because of my control, the control cables and the wiring for the uh, gauges, uh, I need. Maybe at a later point, uh, I'll do it. But I'm also stretching out my uh, wire, my big wire for my motor. And it's also, I'm using the same wire to go up here for the trolling motor because it was just about as cheap. It was just, I think it was like $20 more to get the same spool and have enough of one alt to do both because the trolling motor pulls 56 amps, which I think a number four will cover. But I'm already getting a whole big spool of it, $20 more. I'd rather have the big wire. So that way if I ever upgrade to a bigger trolling motor, that one burns up or something down the road, then I'm covered. 
Well, I got these little lights off Amazon and I've got some kind of similar, they're square on our golf cart. And in things are brighter than my truck lights. And these things weren't very expensive and had really good reviews. So I'm gonna give them a try. I don't know how, as far as the angle, how it'll do. I may have to shim the top or something because there's not really, there's no adjustment. So I'm gonna have to play with that, but I hope these things will work good and it'll be nice to have. They look a little goofy, I'm not gonna lie, but I like it. Well, I'm making my uh, gauge piece for my uh, console, and I've got it marked out, and I'm hoping it's gonna be right. I've gotta drill three holes, two and an eight, and I think I've got everything measured out evenly. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that done, and see what it looks like. Well, I think that's gonna look pretty dang good. Well, I just got all the gauges wired in. This has been about an hour long process, but I'm gonna try and hope and pray everything fits in here. The connector there is kind of tight. Should have maybe angled it a little differently, but yeah. Heck yeah, that looks good. Yeah. That is awesome. It's kind of a tight fit. I uh, accounted for the gauges, the width of the gauges, but I did not really account when I cut the hole. This engine gauge has got a great big bracket on the back. But I get that thing screwed down after a while. It's going to look good. Well, one thing that always drove me insane was charging batteries. And I always used, I had two battery chargers. And I would always, you know, hook two battery chargers on there because I had two 12 volt batteries, 12 volt trolling motor. Well, this one's gonna have a series of two for 24 volts for the trolling motor and then the motor battery, main motor battery. And from everything I've read, this is really confusing to me because 24 volts, you'd think you'd need a 24 volt charger, but you just hook each one to an independent battery and then just wire them in series. And then you just put this on the side, plug it in, and your batteries will charge. So that's gonna be something that is gonna be really awesome for me. So I'm excited about this. So we're gonna go ahead and get all this put in. Well, if you didn't catch it, I don't know. I'm trying to figure out how I'm gonna put all these videos together. It's gonna be interesting to say the least. But if you didn't see it, whenever I built this console, before I gel coated it, I took and drilled, tried to drill all my holes for my rod holders and everything, and my little plug here included, and coated them all with epoxy. So that way it's completely sealed. And hopefully this console will last a long time. So I hope I didn't actually check it. All I did was read the directions for the hole size. And I'm hoping that it'll fit. And hot dang, that's awesome it does. So now, even though it's got a nice little rubber gasket, I'm gonna use the old 5200 and put on the screw holes and run a little bead. And you might as well say that stuff's like Frank's Red Hot, the Frank's Red Hot commercial for this boat build. And I've been putting that crap on everything. Well, I'm going to already tell you one problem with this plug. I got the screws, they're self tapping screws, and that's magnetic chuck. So, therefore, that ain't going to work. Now, I held it up there and drilled my holes and then realized this thing had turned and the holes weren't lined up. But I got it squared away, got everything caulked up with 5200. And these screws don't look as good as the other ones, but they are, in fact, stainless. And there we go. Well, I just pulled this thing out, and I'm getting ready to go ahead and get this thing mounted up in here. And I've already noticed it comes with the same crappy screws, just with pan heads, self-tappers that are not stainless steel. So, we got some number 12s. This thing weighs like 12 pounds or something. I don't know, it's heavy as all get out. So I'm surprised it came with little bitty screws. But I'm just gonna go ahead and kinda eyeball it. I've already got a place right here that I want it. 
So we're gonna go ahead and get this thing somewhat mounted up, ready to go. Well, that was a pain trying to crawl up in here and get that thing screwed up. I don't think it's quite level, but it'll be all right. It ain't going nowhere for sure. So it came, it came with like a six foot cord on it and I really only needed like a foot and it didn't come with anything to seal the connection or keep it together. So I taped it up with some white electrical tape just to kind of keep any moisture from getting in there and keep it from coming apart. And I really don't like zip tying up cords like that. It can create heat, but you don't really have much of an option unless you want to snake it all around everywhere. But it'll work pretty good, I believe. <laughs> Each one of these is a fused. It's like a 7.5 amp fuse on the negative and the positive. That's gonna be, these things are also very long, which is good for most scenarios. But up in here, I'm gonna put a shelf in here and it's gonna be storage above this. So I'm trying to keep everything down low, just above the batteries. And I'm still gonna make up all my cables for my battery cables. And once I do that, I'll go ahead and hook these things up and get the batteries in here and get them on charge. So that's gonna be pretty neat. But actually, I already got one in here. Eh, I'll do it later. All right, well, I'm trying to tie everything up and I got my bin in for my tank and I went ahead, I don't know if it's really needed, but I went ahead and did it. I put a vent in for the area. That way this is proper, well, should be hopefully properly ventilated. It's got three hatches and it's not technically, these hatches aren't, I'm not gonna put feather stripping on them. So they're not technically gonna be airtight. And then with the vent, I think we'll be safe. Well, I'm running into a bit of a brain teaser for me. So I've been doing a lot of reading on, cause I almost forgot this. I didn't even think about it till the other day. And I've got to ground everything in here. I've got to ground my fill. And it, the, the diagram from Muller is, I don't even know, but you're supposed to be grounded with, I think a number 10 or 12 to the battery. The negative on the battery. I've still got to figure out how I'm gonna attach a wire to my vent for my tank. And I'm almost considering putting the wire under that nut. But I've got a clamp as well, but the clamp, I'm gonna have to change the bolts on it, it's not stainless. So for the fill, what I did was just use a bolt. I used two screws and then a bolt on one side and I can just put a little terminal on there and put a nut on it and then there's my ground for that. But as far as grounding the tank to the sending unit, I don't know. I'm gonna have to look it up again. Well, I think I've got everything done in here. I'm not going over it. I don't even know if I've got the ground right. I think I do. But the molar instructions don't show anything about grounding. Some of them do, some of them don't. It's just a lot of mixed information. So I went ahead and took a screw out of the sending unit and used that as a ground, but I don't know. So we've got the vent and the fill grounded. The fittings, instructions, the diagrams don't show anything about the metallic fittings, which I don't know, it is what it is. So I think we'll be okay, hopefully. Well, I just about got it all buttoned up. I got the gauges in and I've still got to screw everything down. But for now, I'm gonna leave it loose because knowing me, I will think of something later that I haven't done. But for right now, I've still got to do I don't know, I can see it. my battery cables. I got to finish up my battery cables because I could not find enough terminal ends the other day and I just had a chance to stop at one place. So I've got to find some more of those this week. And besides running my NEMA cable, I think the wiring's done. I've still got to put the stern light on, the bow light, and the trolling motor. Man, I mean, that will require some wiring. But for the most part, I think we're good. There is just an immortal mess in the boat. And I mean, it's ridiculous. But I've been going like crazy trying to get this done like three in the morning in the last week, every night in the last week. So we're almost there. Well, we're gonna end it here for now. And you know, we've got quite a bit done and it's really starting to come together and it just tickles me to death. 
because it has been so much work and it's been just lots of late nights because I've got kind of on a time crunch and I need to get it done. And I'm just ready to get this thing done in the water and start fishing. So hopefully everything comes together all right in the end and we get it done. The next part will either be trolling motor or I don't know. I haven't got there yet. I haven't figured it all out, but I'm working on it. So we're going to go ahead and end this one for now. And hopefully we'll be having another one up soon. I appreciate everybody watching. Please subscribe. If you haven't already, please do. And we'll see you next time.